Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Breeding to Win. We're lucky enough to be here at Claverflay. It's a glorious sunny day and the stallions are running around in the paddocks behind us. Lots to look forward to on this evening's show. With the build up and all the excitement for next week's July, we've also got the excitement of the KwaZulu Nutel yearling sales. And we've got three stud farms showing off their drafts this evening, Claverflay stud, Ascot stud and Hemelanada stud. Bloodstock South Africa will also be showing an insert on what we've got to look forward to at the sales. And then we've got two Freeman stallions, Wiley Hall and Futura. And we've also got Flower Alley, who stands at Vilgobostriff stud. The Reading to Win team visited Clava Flay Stud this week to speak to John Costa about his draft going to the KwaZulu Nutel yearling sale and what a lovely draft they look to be as well. As I said in my introduction to this evening's show, we're lucky enough to be out at Clava Flay this morning and it's an absolutely glorious day. We've got the KZN sale coming up and with me this morning is John Costa to chat about his draft of six going to the sale. John, always lovely to be here and have you on the show. Thanks for you. You've got six going to the KwaZulu Natal sale and you haven't sold there for quite some time. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, in the old days I used to go to KZN. It was my old hunting ground and uh, we've had some real fun times there you know and uh, it's a great week to be up in Durban just before the July so uh, you know we've got a couple of late late year late fol folders and we decided to to give it a dip and, and go back again this year oh, absolutely you've got six and they look to be really nice sorts and uh, we're going to go through them all because we've only got six so let's start with lot 132 that's the Silvana Colt and now uh, she he's out of a, a mare that's produced a grade one winner in the States yeah, I know it's fabulous to be able to produce something like this for, for the market in South Africa. A very late fall fee, and that's why we chose the latest possible sell that we would sell on. Um, you know, he's a, he's a very athletic colt, and Antono, she wouldn't adjust the game stakes. Uh, amazing mare. In fact, we've had offers from overseas for the mare to go back there. She's the family of, uh, of twice over, so I think it's a very, very exciting pedigree. Lot 135 is a colt by Captain of All who's got off to a very, very good start and he's out of Jet Set Model. Yeah, you know, out of a Jetmaster mare. Jetmaster is making huge waves as a brood messiah. A uh, nice big strapping colt. Um, Captain of All's had a very good start to his career. He's vying for, uh, for freshman sire honours. He's already had two feature winners. Um, and I know Den Dennis Dreyer has one or two that he's nominating for the Group 1s and the Group 2s on July day. So, you know, his fortunes could change in a, in, in, in a, in a flash. Uh, but a very, very nice colt. Lot 237 is a Silvano filly. Um, now she's out of uh, Rubicat and that's a Stormcat mare. Yeah, and, and a half to a, a very good horse, a very talented uh, horse. In fact, a full to a very talented horse uh, with, uh, with Duncan Howells. Um, she's a smart filly. She's, uh, she's very racy, high quality filly, you know, like Silvano can produce them. And uh, as you said, you know, another one out of an international pedigree. And Silvano is pretty popular at the sales at the moment as well. Everybody wants a Silvano. So he should be, you know, with Hawam in the, in the July. Um, he's been one of South Africa's great stallions, hasn't he? Absolutely. Lot 253 is a Pomodoro Colt out of Seventh Virtue. And this is a family of Captain L. Yep, one of Cloverfly's favourite families. And, uh, you know, we can't have enough of them. Uh, Seventh Virtue herself won two races. Uh, this Colt, I thought, was, uh, was a well-balanced Colt. I thought a really nice type to take to Durban. Uh, and Pomodoro is doing exceptionally well, you know, he's got return flight drawn number two in the July. Should she pull that off, uh, it would be amazing for the stallion, but in, in spite of, you know, he's, he's had an incredible start to his, to his career and uh, on the, on the uh, international list, Longines list of stallions, he's in, uh, in the top four in South Africa. Yeah, that's incredible. Lot 134 is a twice over filly out of Jenny Any Dots and twice over again, got a runner in, big runner in the July in the form of Do It Again. Yeah, phew, you know, what a horse. I mean, he won the July as a three-year-old. And uh, twice over, you've got to marvel at what he's done in his first crop. Six individual stakes winners, 
uh, two Group 1 winners, two champions, uh, you know, you can't do much better than what he's done. Um, so, you know, out of a very nice family as well, and, uh, you know, the stallion, the stallion's doing the business. You're only taking a small draft, but certainly a quality draft by, by the sounds of it on paper and on looks. Lot 154 is a Versen Getterix cult, and what can we say about him? He's done exceptionally well, and he's out of Lady Maher, who's uh, also got some international pedigree. Yeah, this is a fabulous pedigree, uh, and a few updates uh, at Royal Ascot uh, out of that family ran forth in the, in the coronation. Uh, and another member of the family won the Dante Stakes. Um, Versen Gedrix at this stage is uh, on top of the log of freshman size. He's, um, I think he's had nine winners already and he's had three stakes winners. Uh, and there's huge talk about Versen Gedrix. I know uh, Tim Butzma at Main Chance says he's chock and block full. Uh, so it's so great to have a Versen Gedricks there at, uh, at uh, KZN Sale as well. Yeah, very exciting stuff. And, and talking of those Royal Ascot updates, you, you spent the week there and did you have a good time? Our oh, feet was fabulous, you know, to, to be in amongst those racing people and see how they just adore their racing and they, how they love their horses. To see the crowd cheering Frankie like they did when he went for the first four on, 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 on the Thursday was just phenomenal. And what had made it extra special this year was to see Bjorn Nielsen's Stradivarius win the Gold Cup for a second year in a row, you know, and Bjorn's got South African connections. He was born in Pinelands. He came out to South Africa at uh, the Premier and the National Yearling Sales this year supported South African breeders, uh, just a great guy and uh, you know to see him have that success and be in the box when Frankie and John Gosden and himself were there with the Gold Cup, it was, it was just, it, it was something to behold, it really was special. Yeah, it was a phenomenal week's racing and we've got a great excitement building for next weekend's July because I don't think we've had a race like that in South Africa for some time with so many great horses racing against each other. It's going to be a very special uh, July, I think, Fee, you know, um, you know, once you get up there, you get into the feel of it and you get into the to the hype. But there's a lot of special horses running. I, I think it's pretty open, but I think it's one of the best fields assembled, you know, and if you think Mr. Rattray having a good bit of it, you know, for him and Eric Sands, that would be special. And it'd be special if Do It Again did it, uh, you know, did it again if you like, and especially in the memory of, of Jack Mitchell, one of our great, uh, great patrons of, of the industry. And then, you know, Pomodoro with a filly, uh, that's special in itself, and Sheikh Hamdan, who supported South Africa so well with her warm. So all in all, you know, it's going to be an extremely special race, and I think a great race day as well. Yeah, I think so too. It's a very tricky race. I want them all to win, so it's going to be very hard. And of course, it's a great time to have this sale, because as you said, you know, you've got all the people there for the July, and I think it's going to be well supported. I hope so, Fee. You know, the, 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 the industry is in a, in, a, in a bit of trouble at the moment, obviously, and, you know, but we must concentrate on the positives. And we've got to get out there and we've got to do extra marketing and, and we've got to do our best to, to sell our progeny. You know, the, 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 the races need horses, uh, trainers need horses. So, uh, you know, the breeders have produced the horses and I'm sure the catalogue looks a good catalogue and I'm sure the breeders have done a good job. Yeah, well, you continuously... Um bring out a fantastic draft and they certainly do look to be another one. So we wish you all the best at the sale. Hope you sell well, John. Thank you for your appreciate. Always good to be with John Costa here at Club of Stud. A lovely draft of six going to the Quasar Detail sale and we wish him all the best. Ashley Parker is taking a lovely draft from his Ascot stud in Port Elizabeth. We also got his comments on his draft for the sale. Ashley Parker from Ascot Stud in Port Elizabeth is sending a fine draft of seven to the KZN Yearling Sale. Lot 9 is a very racy global view cult out of the Grand Dam of Edict of Nantes champion three-year-old cult. Lot 35 is a well-made captain of all filly who is a half-sister to Foreign Source, a multiple two-year-old winner this season from an excellent UK family. Lot 129 is a well-made global view filly out of a half-sister to Irish Ranger and family of Br'er Rabbit. Lot 151 is a beautiful strong global view filly, a half-sister to Bold Coast from the family of Arabian Lass. Lot 171 is a strong Judd Pot Colt out of a listed winner and family of champions Tocata and Long Dollar. 
Lot 245 is a big, scopey global view cult who oozes class and an athletic walker out of a listed winner family of champion Legislate. Lot 259 is a classy looking Mambo in Seattle cult out of a three time winning mare from the family of multiple champion Enchanted Garden. Global View yearlings have been extremely well received, selling up to 1.3 million and being by world champion sire Galileo, who had a wonderful royal ascot, being the sire of a grade one winner Circus Maximus and grade two winner Japan. Global View himself was a grade two and grade three winner, being out of a Stormcat mare, they are short to have a lot of speed. They certainly look like a nice draft with good confirmation and not to be missed at next week's sale. We caught up with David Hepburn Brown and got his comments on his smashing draft also going to the sale next week. David Hepburn Brown from the beautiful Hemelinada Stud sent 16 to the KwaZulu Natal sale to be held on Thursday and Friday, the 4th and 5th of July, at the Sabaya Casino. David is well known for Standing Stallions, Alado, Fencing Master, JPEG, and of course, the up and coming new and exciting stallion, Horizon. The ultra consistent Water Winter is represented by three colts and a filly. Lot 81 is a well-grown athletic colt. He is out of a fantastic light mare who has produced five from five. Here is a chance to own a water winter who will go over ground. Lot 160, a filly who is a well-balanced, strong first foal from a very nice family, her dam being a half-sister to the well-thought-of balance sheet. Lot 164 is a strong balanced colt with lots of presence. He is the first foal out of the four times winning authorized mare, Lucky Tuesday. He is named Red Tuesday. Lot 246 is a well-grown colt who has lots of scope. He is a full brother to a winner. Fencing Master, who ran second in the Dewhurst beaten by a nostril, is represented by three. These are his first progeny to be bred in South Africa. Lot 23 is a well-grown strong colt who looks just like his sire. His dam, Zrinsky, is a half-sister to the well-performed Surcharge who is now racing in Hong Kong. Lot 182, a well-balanced racy colt with a page to back him up. He looks like he could be quick. His half-brother, Elusive Cat, has won since the catalogue went to print. Lot 188, an athletic filly out of a Medician mare, Mulla Massa, who comes from a very strong international family. The well-bred son of Danzig, Alado, who consistently has a high percentage of winners to runners, is represented by two really smart colts. Lot 55, a quality, well-grown athletic colt, whose full sister, Pale Lilac, is now a four-time winner. Lot 178, a strong, well-developed colt with lots of substance. He is a full brother to the four-time winner, Flying Winger. Lot 28, Angry Bird, is a strong, well-balanced filly by Vodacom Durban July producing sire twice over. She is the first foal out of the multiple winning trippy mare, Axare. Lot 47 is a big, strong, balanced colt with lots of substance by Seventh Rock. He is out of the more than ready mare, Big Sugar, who comes from a good Australian family. Lot 57, a good size athletic filly by stakes producing sire Pathfork. The filly named Mother Duck is out of the Royal Academy mare, Captain Antonal. Lot 102, a smart balanced colt with a good presence by deceased dynasty. This quality colt named Mac 4 is out of the Jetmaster mare, Fly Jet Fly, and is related to a host of multiple winners. Lot 124, a nice balanced filly by the first season son of Galileo, Global View. He's got off to a good start in the sales ring. She is the first foal out of the JPEG mare, Hurricane Curran, whose dam is the half-sister to the champion filly, Hammers Hooker. Lot 173, a racy filly by Tappet's only son at stud in South Africa, Kuda Gra. She is out of the dynasty mare, Maasai Princess, who is a full brother to stakes winner, Maasai Warrior. Lot 213, a quality, well-grown athletic colt by Go Deputy, who has great presence. He is the half-brother to this year's Castle Tankard winner, who was sold on this sale in 2016. 
David's Draft certainly look an attractive bunch and not to be missed at this week's sale. Sabaya being the perfect venue as the excitement for July Day builds. Make sure Heman and Arda are on your shortlist. We're here at Clarkman Place Stud this morning to get an update on stallion Royal Mo. And of course, Royal Mo is the only son of Uncle Mo standing in South Africa. And Uncle Mo has a phenomenal story about him. And with me is John Costa to fill us in. John, Royal Mo has been here a while now and he's doing particularly well, isn't he? He's doing very, very well. He's led down into the most magnificent specimen. Um, you know, he stands all of 17 hands high. Uh, so he's a very, very imposing individual. Um, and, you know, Uncle Mo, well, we'll chat about Uncle Mo. What a stallion. Absolutely. He was a phenomenal stallion, and we've got the only son of Uncle Mo here. And Uncle uh, Mo stood for something like 1.840 million. It's a lot of money in rands. Well, if you think of that, it, it's, a, it's a massive amount of money. And, you know, any stallion that can command a, a service fee of $125,000, or as you say, 1.8 million, is a serious, serious stallion and could be on the increase as well after his first crop. I think that says it all in, in one hit. That sort of money you're talking about is, is phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, Fee. But you know, he deserves it. He's had uh, 26 stakes winners in his first crop, uh, six individual Group 1 winners. Uh, Nyquist, who's gone off to stud, uh, has won five Group 1s himself. And I think if you take it that a stallion can have six individual sons at stud from his first crop, I mean, that's almost unheard of. Yeah, absolutely. Now, he keeps shattering records, and Eric Mitchell um, from Blood Horse Daily is also involved. Yeah, listen, he's, he's the, the, the superlatives are amazing. Uh, Bill Oppenheim says that Uncle Moe's had the same start to his stalling career as such greats as AP Indy, Danzig, and Stormcat. Now, Fee, that is massive. When you compare a young horse like Uncle Mo to those kind of great, great stallions, uh, he has to be special. So to have a son of his in South Africa, I think for the South African breeders is, is awesome. Uh, Heinrich Ricks uh, took a big jump to get the horse here. Um, Heinrich supporting him with most of his mares, which is great. And, uh, you know, he, he's, a, he's a type of horse, as much of Mr. Prospect as you can find around, you can bomb into him, you know. So any Western winter mares, water winter mares, those kind of mares, just bomb them into the stallion. I think you're going to get great results. And for Uncle Mo to have six sons at start, that's quite a phenomenal uh, amount as well. Well, it is, uh, and he's obviously one of them. Uh, the other five are all, uh, all in the States. So, you know, that in itself is, is special for South Africa, I would think. Yeah, and uh, first foals are due soon, so that's going to be really exciting. I can't wait to see them and get some pictures. It's going to be very exciting. Fee, uh, he's, he, you know, he had one or two uh, mishaps during his season last year. Uh, so he was off for about a month, which, didn't, was, which wasn't uh, ideal and wasn't great. But the mares that he did get were quality mares. Uh, we sold one at the, at the mare sale now for 300,000 Rand. A Stormcat mare as well, which was uh, great. Actually, a trippy mare out of a Stormcat mare. Uh, so more Mr. Prospector. Um, yeah, so we're really looking forward to his first foals. We believe they're going to be big, imposing type of horses. We think they're going to be great sales horses. And uh, yeah, we, we're looking for good support for this year again. As you said, looking at him as a specimen, he stands 17 hands high, he's big, he's, he's a kind stallion, isn't he? We, we saw him in the paddock this morning, very kind, lovely big stallion, and we saw him running around in the paddock. What a, what a beautiful sight. He's an amazing stallion temperament-wise fee, you know. We had him out here over the farm cell, we were showing him to some clients, 
and he's just he's he's exactly as you say he's kind he's gentle he's uh, he's a beautiful horse you can you know you can run your hands all over him he won't go for you uh, he's he's a, he's a fabulous horse and you know in spite of his injury uh, he moves around the paddock very well um, you know if it hadn't been for Gary Stevens jumping off him when when he heard the snap and holding his leg up he wouldn't be around today uh, and that just shows you, you you can see the photograph of it as well where the horse absolutely stands dead still because he knows he's in huge trouble so he's a highly intelligent horse um, he goes about his job extremely well he's fertile and uh, yeah, now we just got to see what the babies look like. Yeah, he ticks all the boxes. And of course, we've spoken about that injury before and, and that sort of cut his racing career short, which was, was a shame because he was doing well himself. It was a great shame. You know, John Sheriff is a man of few words. And uh, he rated this horse the second best horse that he'd ever trained after Zenyatta. Now, I don't have to tell you about Zenyatta. I mean, those are massive words. And David Ngordo, who's one of the finest judges around in the world today, uh, picked him as a yearling. Uh, paid 300,000 for him and uh, David and Gordo just said this was this was one of the great resources that he'd ever been involved with. So, you know, when you're speaking to gurus like that who know their job, who are the best because they are the best, uh, you know, you've got to take up and just, uh, take note of it. And uh, we have and uh, we're supporting him. And as I said, Heinrich is supporting him well. So, uh, you know, it's all go. All systems go. Yeah. And his fee for 2019? Fee, we're going to do something special, you know. He's, he, as I said, he didn't get off to a great start last year, so um, you know we're going to we're going to do uh, special fees and uh, we'll do discounts for numbers, and uh, we just want to get the mares into him. So uh, you know, give us a call and we'll work a proper deal for you. Yeah, really, as we said, really excited to see those foals, and and when they start running, I think that's when people are really going to uh, sit up and look. Yeah, listen, Fee, the American the American female lions and the American stallions have, have set the world alight. You know, I mean. MV O'Brien was on record the other day to say that Bailey Doyle is built on the American thoroughbred, you know. So um, to have American blood uh, here at Royal Flay and for South Africa is extremely special for us. And, uh, you know, now it's in the lap of the gods, you know, they either have it or they don't. Uh, but we're going to give him a full go and uh, hopefully he, he rewards us. Well, looking at him this morning, it's uh, very, very exciting times ahead, I think. And we wish you all well with Royal Mo here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Lovely to get an update on Royal Mo. He is the most stunning looking stallion. As I said, he's got a lovely nature and way about him and it was lovely to see him here this morning at Claverflay. Every week we feature a John Freeman stallion and this week we've got two. We've got Wiley Hall who's doing exceptionally well and the new stallion on the block who looks very exciting and that's Futura. Stormbird stakes 1,000 metres and sprinting away. Twilight Moon has struck the front of from Look to the Sky. Frosted Gold is running onto the inside. Twilight Moon and Frosted Gold. It's going to be close. Twilight Moon, nothing in it to gain. 50 metres out, but Twilight Moon in front now. Twilight Moon has beaten Frost of Gold. Wiley Hall is the only multiple Grade 1 winning son of Australia's undisputed King of Sires, Redoute's Choice, at stud in South Africa. He achieved a merit rating of 119. A versatile performer who beat Turfentine 1400 metre course specialist Watlan Fever at Grade 2 level and also won the Turfentine stallion making Grade 1 South African Derby. First passed the post in three Grade 1 races and earned a check in six Grade 1 races. Wally Hall striking hands and heels defeat of a high class field in the Grade 1 South African Derby is especially significant because his race record combines speed and classic class. Wiley Hall that comes together with Gothic as they pass the 200. Warhorse, here comes Talina who's finishing strongly on the stand side. Wiley Hall is there. Gothic, Talina's on the outside. But it's Wiley Hall now coming to the lead into the closing stages from Gothic and Wiley Hall has won the SA Derby. 
First past the post in the 2014 Vodacom Durban July, Wiley Hall was denied victory in the boardroom. Wiley Hall, legislate now alongside. Wiley Hall, legislate. Pitcher is flying on the inside. Here it comes. Wiley Hall perhaps ahead. Wiley Hall. He warmed up for the Grade 1 Champions Challenge with a fluent win in the Grade 2 Colorado King Stakes. Wiley Hall goes for home and he looks good for victory. Wiley Hall wins the Colorado King Stakes. And then he won the Grade 1 Premier's Champions Challenge in fine style. But it's Wiley Hall on the stand side, half the deficit, no worries, Majmu tries hard in the closing stages. Wiley Hall, Majmu tries hard, but she's not going to get that, Wiley Hall beats Majmu. Wiley Hall's triple champion sire, Redoute's Choice, is the undisputed king of Australian sires. Wiley Hall earned a check in 10 stakes races, including six grade one races. The beautiful looking flower Ellie stands at Vilgobos Drift Stud and we feature him on tonight's show. I love another colours Body Buster, Dullahan on the far outside. Here's the wire. I'll have another. That's one the Kentucky Derby. Keep Smiling is lashing home at the outside. Magic School from nowhere. Keep Smiling got there at the end. Relay also coming low strongly. It's going to be close. Relay coming strongly. Relay gets up to it for Phil Flower. Smiley Kylie's coming well. So is Sacred Ibers. Virtuoso and Smiley Kylie. It's getting close. It goes to Smiley Kylie. Alibi Guy, though, is putting on the pressure now. And Alibi Guy together there on the outside with Steak and Ale. But Alibi Guy has a neck advantage. And it's going to be Alibi Guy. From Alibi Guys on the outside, but it's Liberty Hall. And Liberty Hall's going on. Liberty Hall on the outside. Tree Tamba Alibi Guy. Beat Flower 
and Beach Flower takes the lead from lovely Lloyd Ree. And at 10 to 1, Beach Flower is the Lady Canterbury Champion. Well, that's a wrap for this week's show. It's going to be lots of excitement, as I said earlier, this coming week with the July ahead of us and the KwaZulu-Natal yearling sale. And we look forward to seeing you again next Sunday evening.